here with Tori Wires, our resident sketchbook artist, an absolute expert in how to bring nature into our sketchbooks. And you have brought a stunning collection of seeds and pods with you. Some of these I've never even seen. I don't know what they are. I want to use this one as a maraca. It's so cool. What is it? That is a lotus seed pod. Oh, so these are lotus seeds in mm -hmm. here. Interesting. So take me through what everything here is and how you found them. Yeah, so I don't have a lot of tropical interesting seed pods in Indiana, but <laughs> online has a plethora of them. So I have the lotus seed pods, which come in different sizes and shapes, and I love the little seeds in there because they're just really interesting. And then we have the Japanese Chinese lanterns. They're beautiful. The they color, it seems, I can't believe that's nature. The color is so vibrant. So vibrant. And it really kind of shows up differently than any other kind of pot I found. This is a Texas ebony tree seed pod. Hmm. So it's very firm. And this is a magnolia tree seed pod. Wow, it uh, has orange seeds, it looks like. It's so cool. It looks like a creature from another world, frankly. It does. And then this last one you said is the least exotic. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is actually from my front yard. So it is just a perennial flower that's just in the Midwest. I can't remember the name, but I'm sure a lot of people have seen those. But even those are beautiful when they're dried. It's true. So, so what are we doing with these cool seeds and pods? How are we exploring them? Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at all the different shapes, um, especially when you can find natural things that aren't close to you, really kind of getting in there and looking at the different shapes and textures and really patterns can be a lot of fun for a sketchbook practice. Cool. So I'm going to start with the lotus because it's just almost like from another planet. I know. It <laughs> seems like if you told me that this grew in space, I would believe you. <laughs> it's very cool looking. It has a lot of texture. So I like to start when something is really odd looking on the outside and getting that basic shape to start with and kind of working my way in. So that's interesting that you always like to start from that sort of big outside shape. It's almost like drawing a face where you start with the outside of the face shape instead of starting with the features. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's really, especially when you have natural objects, important that you don't just let your brain take over, meaning it's not just a bunch of circles happening. They're really odd little shapes that all hold little seeds. So thinking and really looking and kind of slowing down is oh, a lot of fun. They're actually not circular. You know, I once heard um, the illustrator Milton Glaser say that you never know something until you draw it. That's and true. I think that's so true because I would look at this and I'd be like, oh yeah, okay, it's a circle that has circles in it. But if I really look at it now, I can see it's not really a circle and those are definitely not circles in it. They're kind of weird shapes. Mm -hmm. So even the stems have these weird little wrinkles on them and it goes down into like an even smaller stem. So especially for sketchbooks, it's really fun to just sit down and explore the different textures and shapes that you can see. Right, and take the time to really look closely, which is what we talked about at the beginning of our sketchbook lessons, you know, mm -hmm. at what you're seeing and not just assume you know what it is. Mm -hmm. Well, and especially with nature, um, you can have a lot of fun really exploring all the different shapes and textures and then also the colors. I was going to say, this is brown, but it's not just brown. Right. Because if you look at it, there's striations and different shades of brown and they're, you know, the light's reflecting off it differently because of the curve. There's, I mean, I'm, my brain is starting to go, Tori, because there's actually a lot to explore that I never even considered. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing this kind of stuff and you sketch these, do you find that after doing like 20 sketches of, you know, lotus pods, that those shapes start to appear in your other work because you're now, they're in your brain as a pattern? Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time in sketchbooks collecting kind of a visual library. And so looking at how these little wrinkles or the circles come together really does show up in my other work in patterns and shapes and lines and textures. So you may not even be using the actual lotus pod when you go to create like a big painting or, you know, a large art journal page or something. But what you are using is that almost like that sense memory, that physical memory of having painted those things and having done all those shapes. Oh my gosh, that blue changes that brown so much. That's amazing. 
Well, I'm thinking about where does a lotus come? Water. So why not add a little bit of water in there to give it that sense of its place? That's such a nice idea. Let's look at some of the other drawings that you've done here. I can see that you have lots of variations. Now, are these black and white drawings the same as these green ones? Is it the same object or a different object? It is actually the leaves that come from this little seed pod. So uh, this one is really about the illustration first, adding some color. And this one is really about the leaf and watercolor first, and then adding that stem. And I want to point out how your drawings have so much text in them, because part, I assume, of your sketchbook, as you said, is it's a reference book for you. Mm -hmm. Any last tips that you have for people about looking at seeds and pods? I think getting out and being maybe a little artistic scientist can be a lot of fun and put it in your sketchbook. I think there's a definite mix between art and science. Thank you, Tori. So this is Tori's last visit with us, and I hope that you will give one of her sketchbook prompts a try. Even if you think you can't draw, it's a great way to get started.